English is very good. You can get it over the internet or over smartphones. Um, is this on or? Okay. Um, anyway, it's, it's, I turned on CNN this afternoon. And, um, it wasn't until 3 o'clock that Wolf Blitzer in the Situation Room had breaking news that Al Jazeera was reporting at 8 o'clock this morning. Okay, well, anyway, are there any questions? I'm going to talk about um, form factors, electromagnetic form factors. Um, that's background material for doing uh, Schwinger's calculation of the anomalous magnetic moment of the electron and you want it, so. Um, okay, so I'm going to basically just follow Weinberg. Um, and, uh, except that I'm, so I, I don't use his, I try not to use some of his notation, which I think is needlessly obscure. Okay, so we've got the incoming state is a uh, real electron. P squared is minus m squared. It's on the mass shell. It has spin s. And uh, going out is a, another electron with a different momentum. J is the current. And um, what generates translations, of course, is uh, an exponential of, or I should say it's just the full momentum operators, so that's J mu of zero, E D I P X P S, and this gives us um, E D I P minus P prime dot X, P prime S prime, J mu of zero, P S. So the thing that we're going to focus on then is this matrix element. But first, uh, we con current conservation tells us that, that the four derivative of J mu is zero for the four divergence. And um, that means that uh, zero is equal to P prime S prime D G J mu of X. S, but that then tells you when you differentiate here what you get is um, P minus P prime mu P prime S prime J mu of zero P S equals zero with or without the phase factor E uh, to the I P minus P prime X. So you get this equation at first, and then in as much as that is zero, you might as well multiply by that and simplify the equation. So that's our, uh, that's one relation that must be satisfied. This is mu. Um, another relation is P prime S prime Q P S. Well, this is an integral of P prime S prime J zero of X P S P Q X. And so this is integral E to the I P minus P prime dot X P prime S prime J zero zero P S P Q X. And this then is just P by Q delta Q of P minus P prime, uh, P prime S prime J of zero, P S. And um, on the other hand, this we saw previously that this was an eigenstate of Q, P S, an eigenstate of Q with eigenvalue Q, so this is Q P prime S prime P S, which is Q 
delta cubed of p minus p prime, delta s s prime, and so all together we get that p prime s prime j zero of zero p s is q delta s s prime. This is chronic of delta over two pi q. Oh, where does the S match S prime? Hey, you're going to get a Where does what come from? Uh, do the S prime just? S prime is Where does this exponential come yes. from? This exponential came from over here. The anything at x is always e to uh, minus okay. ip dot x, so that thing is 0 e to the ip x. Oh, it's the okay. Any other question? All right, so that's the end of that. Now, um, there are two really important cases. One is spin zero, one is spin one half. Spin zero isn't really relevant to the magnetic moment of the electron. The electron doesn't have spin zero, but it's probably worth looking at um, because it's much simpler. So P prime J mu of zero P. Notice that since we learned how to extract the X dependence, we can focus our, our attention on just J mu of zero. And this is Q some j mu of p prime and p divided by 2 pi q root 2 p prime 0, 2 p 0. This is basically from the normalization of the states. Um, and what's left over is some four vector. And uh, so you ask, well, what four vector? Well, these guys are on the mass shell. So p squared is p prime squared is minus m squared. And so p plus or minus p prime squared is minus 2m squared plus or minus 2p dot p prime. So the only available scalar is actually p dot p prime. So this is basically a function of p dot p prime. And, um, well, and the two four vectors, p mu and p prime mu. And uh, so we're going to set k equal to p minus p prime. This is often called the momentum transfer. And um, we're then going to say, well, this j mu of uh, p prime and p, we can write it as p, plus, p prime plus p mu times some f of k squared uh, plus i p prime minus p mu h of k squared. And um, let's not worry about why there's an i here, because this term is going to go away. Namely, the current conservation tells us that for any current j, whatever the spin of the initial and final state, p, p minus p prime mu dotted into j mu is going to get zero. So that means that p prime minus p mu on this, which is p prime j mu of zero p, is p prime minus p mu well, apart from, I mean, let's factor out all of this. So that times j mu has to be 0. And that means, what is it? Well, that is p prime minus p dot p prime plus p times f of k squared plus i p prime minus p squared g of k squared. But this is not equal to zero. This is equal to zero because it's just minus m squared plus m squared f. So this is zero 
but this means that we get the result that g of k squared equals zero. So that means then that um, j mu for the scalar case of p prime t is just p prime plus p mu f of k squared, where k again is p prime minus p. Um, and so putting all these factors together, we find that the matrix element of the current j mu of zero is, which we see is q over 2 pi q. Somehow I left out a delta function in my notes here. Um, That's right. right. Uh, that's right. We factored it out basically. Which delta function? Um, I meant this delta function. But we factored it out from both sides. Yeah, yeah. So this is, this does not have a delta function in it anymore. Well, you've written it with two, the same. Uh, you've written it diagonally, anyways. Yeah. No, I understand that I wrote it diagonally, but um, it's. Puzzling to me how it is that uh, I mean these states I have delta function normalization that's really the origin of it. So all right, let me let me just slough over this. I don't think it's important. We're going to skip on in a second anyway. Um, this is then um, Q. We're going to the case. Oh, I'm sorry. This is J. This is zero looking at the zero case, j0. And this is q 2p0 from here. This is, as, he, as um, you said, diagonal. Uh, 2 pi q 2p0, or q f of 0 over 2 pi q. And so comparing these, we get that f of 0 equals 1. Um, I I guess this is, I mean, let, let, let's just look at, it. let's just, just review this. Q on this should be that. There's a delta function norm there. Then you get this, that, that gives you a delta function, you have this. Well, you cancel the two delta functions, you get then the J0 between these two states no longer has a delta function. That's just the way it is. Um, that makes us unhappy most of the time. You mean this delta 3 and then the delta 3 from the Q? I, I'm, I'm just worried that uh, I, I just find it a little bit, a little, a little odd that we can have states of delta function normalization, a matrix element, not have a delta function on the other side. But apparently, we proved that's the case, so that's just the way it is, the way the cookie crumbles. Um, all right, so now we're looking at uh, j equal to 1 half. So this is the case of real interest. Unfortunately, it's, um, it's about 10 times as complicated. Um, and what we have is P prime S prime J mu of zero P S. And now we're going to write this I Q E bar of P prime S prime. This is the spinner. E bar, by the way, is U dagger beta, which is U dagger I gamma zero. This is gamma mu. P prime P, mu of P and S, and um, 2 pi cubed. Okay, so that's what we expect. Um, the Q comes from, from the fact that just in general this is the case. So we expect something like this. And once again, there isn't a delta function over here, so we're sort of used to it. 
So what is this gamma mu? Well, in general, you can write gamma mu as some linear combination a plus b gamma mu plus c gamma mu gamma nu plus d gamma phi gamma mu plus e gamma phi, something like that. And where a, b, c, d, and e are in general going to be functions of p prime and p. It turns out, however, that you can, that of course these spinners satisfy the Dirac equation in momentum space. And so I p slash plus m u of p and s. By the way, UPS is a better company than FedEx. Um, is zero, and that's e bar p prime s prime on I p prime slash plus m. Uh, uh, this, the, the line above that, what about this new index? The, yeah, well, A, B, C, D, E are replete with P and P prime U and new. Okay. <sighs> All right, so in particular, what this tells us is P slash on U you put the minus m on the other side, and then you multiply by minus i, so this is i m u. And similarly, uh, u bar prime, p prime slash is um, the same business, i m u bar prime. So, that, so using these relations, you can basically simplify all of this and exclude various combinations. And then what you find is that u bar of p prime, s prime, gamma mu of p prime and p, u of p and s, is u bar of p prime, s prime. And now, uh, you have one term, is gamma mu, f of k squared. k again is P prime minus P. Or is it P minus P prime? It's P minus P prime. By the way, if you're reading through either my notes or Weinberg's notes, um, you often come about a minus sign that is occasioned by the interchange of prime. So P minus P prime goes into P prime minus P, and that absorbs a minus sign minus i over 2m p plus p prime mu g of k squared plus p minus p prime mu over 2m h of k squared u of p minus. Why did we, um, why did we shift back to x equals zero? What did, oh. that, what did that buy us? I'm sorry, why did we do what? Why did we shift to x equals zero? We had j nu of x and we, had, we, we shifted it to well, x zero. Well, because when, if we have, um, if we're over here, this starts out being essentially an arbitrary function of x. Okay, so to go from a function of x to a number is a huge simplification. Remember, well, the number of functions is the, what, third degree of infinity? But we're talking, I mean, at the end, we're still talking about a matrix element in this operator is single space time point. We could have done that just as well, calling the space time point. Yeah, I, all right, all right. I, I, I completely agree with you. Yes, you could. You could, but it's. I mean, then it doesn't seem like you would have to worry about the delta function. Well, nobody worried about it but me. I, mean, I don't know why I. <laughs> It bothered me, but it's 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 not a real issue. All right. Okay. So um, I don't think uh, 
I mean, I could assign as a homework problem or do one or two of these examples in class, but I don't think it's worth it. I think you can appreciate that this trick, these two tricks together with other tricks, can take us from five terms down to three terms. Um, or in a sense, you know, sense two terms, it's really just the first two. Um, All right, now what we're going to say is we're going to use hermeticity. G U dagger is G U, the hermetist permission. And so what we have then is P prime S prime, G U of zero, P S complex conjugate is equal to P S, G U of zero. That's fine. All right, now, uh, what is that? Well, we've written that as, we've said that this is um, apart from an I, so that means I, U bar prime, gamma mu, U, complex conjugate, is equal to I U bar uh, gamma mu U prime. Can I ask a question about the spinless case? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so well, where did G come from? Is it related to H over here? Or was it supposed to be the same number? Here same here. letter? Where is G? Oh, it's just that what we is G related to H. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped. Yeah, I've done something completely stupid here. I, a G is H. Okay. And I don't think there is any H. I don't know why. I. No, oh, that's no, that's H. No, it was H, and I, I, I just. I spent so much time last night and today on the spin one half case that I forgot that I had called that H. So this is H. So we, so and so then what we're saying here then is that H. Right. So because of current conservation, we're able to say that H has to be zero. Yeah. And now we only seem to have gotten one point of F. So have we determined F? Oh, we. We determined we, f of zero. We, we, we've only determined f of zero. Okay. F is the form factor. Okay. So f of zero is one, and how f depends upon k would say how in effect the uh, the charge distribution of the particle really is distributed. Okay. All right. Now. Oh, I've got, um, all right, so that uh, tells us um, uh, this, and then there's a minus, so this is minus, and then I'm going to drop the I's. Um, so this is minus U dagger gamma mu star uh, and now this is a beta dagger but beta actually is permission u prime is equal to u bar gamma mu u prime okay so this is our equation here with minus sign um, beta turns out to be uh, permission, um, and so this is minus. So this effectively says, let me let me just rewrite it one more time. U dagger gamma mu star beta u prime equals u dagger beta gamma mu u prime. So this is telling us minus gamma mu star beta is beta 
and mu. What is beta? Beta. Oh, is, beta is this oh, thing is. that is i gamma zero. zero. Okay. It has the advan It has several advantages. It's um, you see, ga gamma zero is anti-emission, mm -hmm. but beta is i gamma zero, so it's emission. Mm -hmm. And so beta dagger equals beta, and beta squared is one, whereas gamma zero squared is minus one. Okay, so this tells us then that, oh, I, I, I should have used uh, not a star but a dagger on this because it has a matrix structure. It's a dagger in my notes, I just wasn't looking at my notes. Since beta squared is one, this tells us that beta gamma mu dagger beta is equal to minus gamma mu. Oh, and let's be a little bit careful here because um, this is P prime P, and this one now is P P prime. And so this is P P prime P prime P. So that's uh, this is the rule that we need to use. And what that tells us then is that beta gamma mu dagger f star plus i over 2m plus p on mu g star a squared, of course, is the same whether it's p minus p, whether it's p p prime or p prime p, plus p minus p prime mu over 2m h star beta is equal to minus gamma mu f minus i over 2m p plus p prime mu g and then now a minus sign p minus p prime mu over 2m h. Do, um, does capital gamma in this spin one half case and this script j in the spin zero case, are they, do they have a special name? Script j I don't know. Script J is just gets replaced by this, and then it just turns into this. Uh -huh. And the other question was, well, I mean, gamma gamma is obviously the same type of object in the spin one half case. Right. Right. To mean the but it's but it's but it, but but that gamma is is this gamma is gamma mu f right right, right, right in terms of these other functions. It's all. Right, but these are the spin one half case. They have nothing. To right, do. right, of course, of course. Of course. Um, but so the, the goal is to really get these functions, right? The goal now is to say something about f, g, and h for spin one half. Okay. And uh, as I said, gamma zero dagger is minus gamma zero, but gamma dagger is gamma. Spatial ones are okay. On the other hand, we have a beta and a beta. So it turns out that beta, gamma mu dagger, well, let's just do gamma zero. Gamma zero dagger beta, this is minus, and so this is minus gamma zero. Beta, gamma dagger beta, well, it's, it, this is the same thing as beta, gamma beta. But beta and gamma anti-commute because beta is top as gamma zero and gamma is spatial, and so this is minus gamma. So basically, the rule is beta gamma mu dagger beta is minus gamma mu, and 
this is, this is an important relation which we've seen and used before. Um, so what does that tell us? That tells us that beta gamma mu dagger beta is minus gamma mu, so f star is f. Uh, the next one with g, well, it's beta squared, and there's, there are two minus signs, so again, g star is g. And then finally, over here, beta squared is 1, two minus signs, and h star is h. So, not surprisingly, we picked, Weinberg picked, or somebody may have been Fermi, for God's sakes, who originally chose this parameterization, and they were picked with the i's and so forth, and the minus signs, so that f, g, and h would be real. But now we apply current conservation. So that gives us zero is p minus p prime mu, p bar prime gamma mu, of p prime p u. And when I say prime here on a u, I mean that it's p prime s prime. OK, so that just gives us u bar prime. And now what we have is p minus p prime u dotted into a, where is this thing? A gamma mu, that just gives us p slash minus p prime slash. This is going to give us, I think, 0, actually. And then this is going to give us k squared. And so this gives us p slash minus p prime slash times f minus i over 2m p squared minus p prime squared g plus k squared over 2m h u. And this has to be 0. Well, p slash on u by the you said the middle term is Dirac equation is just i m and p prime slash on u prime bar is again i m so they can is that what you were saying uh, are you talking about the middle term this term you said over here that the middle term was zero but uh, yeah this middle term is zero that's zero yeah. So this is I m minus I m. This is minus m squared plus m squared. So these are both zero. So, so p and p prime are, they have the Just same. Just on mass shell. They're both on mass shell. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. OK. Because that's throughout this whole discussion, because what we're talking about here is physical states. A physical state, another physical state, in other words, a real electron. <clears throat> so this gives us u bar prime u k squared h over 2m is 0, so h is 0. So we've gotten rid of h. So it's not possible that, so what about this, this u, u bar prime u? That can't possibly be zero? No, this is, this is sort of a chronic intelligence. Okay. Especially when if you let p equal p prime. But I mean, even when it's not, it's not a chronic intelligence, but it's, you know, some p dot prime or something. Okay. Now, we know h is equal to 0. And so we want to let, now we want to look at the case p prime goes to p. This means k goes to, k goes to 0. So in this case, then, what we have is p prime s prime, j mu of 0, p s, 
this is i q over 2 pi q u bar and I'll just write it as p and s prime so I'm really setting I guess p to p prime gamma mu p p u of p and s alright so what is this this is I q u bar of p and s prime over 2 pi q and now it's gamma mu f of 0 minus i over m p mu g of 0 u of p and s okay on the other hand we've got these various gamma matrix identities the anti-commutator of gamma mu with i p slash or i gamma nu p nu plus n. Well, what is that going to be? The anti-commutator of gamma mu with gamma nu is 2 eta mu nu. And so this is 2 i eta mu nu p nu. And then gamma mu anti-commuting with m is just 2 m gamma mu. And so that's equal to 2m gamma mu plus 2i p mu. All right. On the other hand, this thing is i p slash plus m, and that annihilates u to the right and u bar to the left, because we've said p prime equal to p. So we have p slash plus m, or i p slash plus m, u is equal to u bar i p slash plus m equal to zero. All right. So that means that this structure here between u bar and u is zero. So that means u bar 2m gamma mu plus 2i p mu u equals zero. And that tells us then that we go over here. U bar of p and s prime gamma mu u of p and s is minus i p mu over m. U bar of p and s prime u of p and s. And um, this, of course, tells you something about what these gamma mu's are doing. Namely, a gamma mu is basically pulling out a minus i p mu over m if you're, if, when you say p prime equal to p. Um, on the other hand, these guys are actually delta s this is the minus i p mu over m, but this is m over p0 delta s prime s. So altogether, this is just delta s prime s m over p0. So this structure here is actually even simpler than what I first put down. OK. So this structure here then means that this has just been replaced by that. And moreover, we already had a p mu over m here. So if you keep tr uh, track of the factors here, what you got is i q u bar of p and s over pi cubed minus i p mu over m. Well, I'm writing this so somewhat slowly. F of zero minus i p mu over m g 
of zero because we've said p prime equal to pk is zero. And then using this result, the last result that I, all right, this is then i minus i, this is then q over 2 pi cubed p mu over p zero delta s prime s f of zero plus g of zero. Using this um, rule here that. So the anti-commutator was to get this behavior of how u bar gamma operated on, uh, well, not operated. Yes. We use the anti commutator to get the equation above the one you're writing. And then that allowed us to replace the gamma mu in front of the f0 with the same factor that's in front of the g0. Right. We originally had um, this and that. But we want to we uh, get a more convenient expression for gamma mu. And so we use this relation here, the gamma mu on all that is just this. Okay, so that, there we've got that. On the other hand, way, way back here, we proved in general that P prime S prime J zero PS is Q delta S prime S over two pi Q. Um, hold it, sports fans. Uh, this is actually P. The reason for that is that this equation was had a common factor of delta Q to P prime minus P. So when you cancel that common factor, uh, you get an equation that only holds when P prime is P. So this is really P S prime. And using that, we see that this thing here from mu equal to zero, so now we go to mu equals zero, and we get that this at mu equals zero, well then the p's cancel, and so we get um, ps prime j zero of zero ps, well this has to be q delta s prime s over two pi cubed. On the other hand, we see here from this derivation that it's equal to q over two pi cubed. Those cancel delta s prime s, and then f of zero plus p of zero. So this gives us the normalization condition that f of zero plus p of zero equal to one. So these form factors and zero momentum transfer uh, add up to one. So that's what we get out of that. Okay, now once again we're going to use this Dirac equation in momentum space. And we're going to do some gymnastics here. Now we go back to P prime S prime. And we're going to look at gamma mu gamma nu, the commutator this time, times P prime minus P nu between the two spinners. Okay. Well, first of all, that's U bar prime I over 2 commutator of gamma mu with P prime slash minus I over 2 commutator of gamma mu with P slash U. All right. Now, the commutator is the anti-commutator plus twice the minus term. 
And so this is equal to V bar prime. Here's twice the minus term. Minus I P prime slash gamma mu. So that comes from the commutator. And now that lets us replace commutator with anti-commutator. And then we do the same thing here, minus i gamma mu p slash plus i over 2 gamma mu p slash. All right. So we've rewritten it this way. Now we use the, we use two things. Namely, we use the Dirac equation, p slash on u and p prime slash on u bar prime first. Secondly, we use that the anti-commutator of gamma mu with a structure involving gamma nu is just 2 a w nu. And so this means that this structure here is equal to u bar prime m gamma mu. That's from this term. This one is going to give us I P prime mu and then M gamma mu from that term and then plus I P mu U. And so this is all together in bar prime I P prime plus P mu plus 2M gamma mu, mu. Okay, so this funny commutate, this funny structure of a commutator of gammas together with the momentum transfer is the sum of the momenta plus a gamma mu. All right. um, I'm going to skip the incidentally. This, this trick allows one to use, to, to, to parameterize this current in a different way, according uh, in terms of functions called f1 and f2, and uh, the analog of this is uh, f1 of zero is one. But we're going to do it, use it to do something else. We're going to say this is where is our structure here? Uh, all right, it's this plus this. This thing is already zero. So this, this plus this, we're going to use this trick. Well, actually, that's current conservation. This thing is zero. So we're going to rewrite this in a slightly different way. And what we're going to do is we see that gamma mu between u bar prime and u is the sum of the momenta and then a commutator. And, and, and that allows us to rewrite this in the following way. In other words, u bar prime gamma mu f minus i over 2m p plus p prime mu g u. We're going to rewrite u <coughs> bar prime minus i over 2m p plus p prime mu f plus g plus i over 4m gamma mu gamma nu commutator p prime minus p nu f u. So now, and this is, this again is p prime s prime p s. All right, so we've rewritten it in this way. Any questions? So the claim is that that's equal to that thing with u, u bar prime and u. And we use this relation we just derived to do that? Right. OK. Here, share with your friends. Number one, you will have type 2 diabetes before, the, before spring break. OK, 
Okay. Um, let me see. I, I see this says page seven. Let me just make sure that the previous one was page six. Yes, it was. Okay. And now we're in good shape to go to the limit of um, slow electrons and in particular not simply slow electrons but p and p prime only slightly different. Well, if they're both slow then of course they're only slightly different. All right. Way back when when we were doing group theory in the Lorentz group we had Jij was minus I over 4 commutator this is gamma i, gamma j, this is spatial i and j, and this is one half epsilon i, j, k, sigma k, zero, zero, sigma k. So effectively, this is the uh, angular momentum. And j, i, zero, minus i over four, gamma i, gamma zero, this turns out to be i over two, Sigma i, zero, zero, minus sigma i. Okay. All right. And so we're going to the limit where p is approximately p prime, and they're both, maybe not zero, but they're pretty close to zero. In that case, um, we can use the zero momentum limit of the spinners, which is 1 over root 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, and u, 0 minus, is 1 over root 2, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. And u bar, which is u dagger beta, is just the same thing as u dagger for this, in this limit, when, when p and p prime are effectively zero. Okay, so, u bar commutated gamma i, gamma j, u, in this zero momentum, this slow electron limit, is 2i epsilon i j k, uh, u dagger sigma k zero zero sigma k u, but these u's look like this, and so this effectively is four i epsilon i j k u dagger sigma k over two zero zero sigma k over two, and this then is. Uh, remember there's a 1 over root 2 in these u's, and so this is 4i, epsilon i, j, k, sigma k over 2, s prime s. Now we're thinking of s prime s. Instead of plus minus, we can think of it as 1, 2. Or left, right, up, down. Okay, that's that. On the other hand, u bar gamma i gamma zero u, and so, okay. that is this. So this is equal to minus two u dagger uh, sigma i zero zero minus sigma i u. But the difference between the upper and lower components is, is, is nothing at all in the zero momentum limit. So the minus sign just makes everything zero. So now, um, if we look at this um, structure here, Uh, so now I've actually lost my place. I don't quite remember what have I done here. Yes. Okay, we've rewritten the whole thing 
so that now um, this is the this is the basic matrix element. It's now of this form. And so what we've got then is U bar of P prime S prime gamma K of P prime P U of P and S again for slow electrons is approximately minus I over 2M. And now it's basically just U dagger prime U, P plus P prime K, F of 0 plus G of 0. plus I over 4M, U dagger, gamma K, gamma J, P prime minus PJ, F of 0, U. Uh, so, in other words, um, essentially there wasn't anything to do here, it's just that we went to uh, the case where this gamma was instead of a time index, it was a spatial index. So we set mu equal to k, and there was nothing to do for this, but for this one, we have a structure of gamma k with gamma something. Well, if it's gamma zero, we saw we got zero. So it has to be gamma k with gamma j, and um, that's the way I wrote it. And so this is equal to then minus I over 2M P plus P prime K delta S prime S minus 1 over M epsilon K J M P prime minus P J sigma m over 2 s prime s f of 0. All right. So that's, that's what happens when we make this slow electron approximation. Write that in a way that looks a little bit nicer, namely U bar U prime S prime gamma with a vector sign over it, U of P and S is approximately minus I over 2M P plus P prime. Delta S prime S plus 1 over M. Now we've interchanged P and P prime to get a minus sign. P minus P prime cross sigma over 2 S prime S F of 0. So that's what we've got. So we've reduced this matrix element to something that it's um, starting to look um, Simple. Well, the interaction of ES dot A of X, we can think of this as a classical electromagnetic field. And um, now this is the thing we've been analyzing all afternoon. This is the minus I Q over 2 pi Q integral E bar P prime S prime gamma vector u of p and s dot a of x dq x and of course pulling this back to time zero or spatial space time zero gives us an e to the i p minus p prime dot x and we can imagine that everything here is time independent so this is really a spatial um, quantity here. 
So let's see, what did I do next? Okay, we want this dot product. And what is our gamma? Well, our gamma here is P plus P prime, and then P minus P prime times that. Well, P plus P prime, if we put a P here, suppose we have integral P dot A, e to the i, p minus p prime x, d cubed x, of course this thing is the same thing as um, uh, a dot grad p to the i, p minus p prime x, d cubed x, except for a minus i, I guess, and so this is now integrating by parts. We have e to the i p minus p prime dot x um, i uh, divergence of a d cubed x. And we're in the Coulomb gauge, so that's zero. Right? So, so in other words, we don't have to worry about this term because of the p and the p prime although it is p plus p prime and so I'm, I'm I thought that was obvious at this point I'm a little puzzled as to why that's going away. Um, well, it's got to be the Coulomb gauge condition, but I somehow I'm, I'm not quite finish. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the term, on this term, rather than that term. And I'll tell you in next class. By the way, the, in the homework problem, I posted the solutions. But uh, the trick was integrate by parts. If you integrate by parts before doing anything, you can get an expression that's um, q squared a to mu nu minus q nu. Uh, that's the truth. Okay, so um, what we do now is we just keep this term, and so this thing is skipping this. What we get then is minus iq f of zero over m two pi cubed integral d cubed x e to the i p minus p prime dot x, a of x dot p minus p prime cross sigma over 2 s prime s. Now we do this razzmatazz with the gradient. Um, the, certainly p minus p prime is the gradient on this apart from an i. Integrating by parts, we have um, the gradient acting on um, uh, A, but the gradient acts in a funny way through this. Um, it's A dot P minus P prime cross sigma, and because of the, the structure there of the P minus, uh, of the cross product, this turns out to be um, minus Q f of 0 over m 2 pi cubed integral t cubed x e to the i p minus p prime dot x sigma over 2 s prime s dot b of x. So curl with a curl. When you integrate by parts and take into account the epsilon i j k, you get curl of a rather than the divergence of a. That gives you b. 
the integral then gives you a double function, and altogether we have here minus q f of 0 over m sigma over 2 dot b delta q p prime minus p. And um, this thing on the other hand, that is to say, this energy is by definition minus the magnetic moment over the spin, j, times jj, s prime, s dot b. Well, jj is just sigma over 2. And so what we get is the uh, relation that mu is equal to q f of 0 over 2m. Okay. Now we saw that f of 0 plus g of 0 was 1. And so what we so in fact what, what, what turns out to be the case is that this is equal to q over 2m minus q over 2m g of 0. So this is the correction that we'll do next time to get uh, Schwinger's correction. This tells you that uh, the Gauer magnetic ratio is 2 or however you want. Anyway, it gives you the correct magnetic moment. So that's, that's the end of that story. And uh, I'll post these notes on the website sometime tonight. So are there any questions? Is it only dependent on f of zero because we're are, are we in still this low momentum limit? Actually, let me see the book. I'm just curious. Uh, hmm. Hmm. How is it? I just was looking at the looking at it today for the first time the section on renormalization. Exactly. All right. Thanks. Okay. So I'm sorry. What was your question? Uh, was this all done still in the low momentum limit? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. And so is it only depending on f of 0 because of that? Yes. Okay, so in general it would be yeah. f of k. f of k, okay. But we're at low momentum transfer. So, the electrons moving slowly, big magnetic field, and in fact it's almost, it's, it's, you can even take it to be homogeneous. Right? So almost homogeneous. Or you can even take it to be what we're really trying to focus on is just the value of the All right, so I guess we can stop with that.